hello and welcome back to Cheat Day Does Stuff. It's been a little while since I've done a video like this. I noticed that Microsoft just released a, a posted a video to their Microsoft Power Apps website, or well, sorry, Microsoft Power Apps YouTube channel, and it just um, should just showing some of the highlights that are coming for the Power Platform in first wave 2023. So this is I'm posting this video as of 26th of January. So this is sort of some of the new stuff that's coming for the Power Platform. And if you're a Power Apps developer, Power Automate developer, this stuff is going to be pretty interesting because um, these this is stuff that you're going to be able to use in your application um, this year. Well, this is what's coming to Power Apps and Power Automate this year. Now, this video also focuses on a couple of other things like virtual agents and Power Pages, but I am just going to sort of take a like a give you a quick summary of my thoughts on the Power Apps and the Power Automate. Uh, announcements. With this stuff, I think, uh, you know, there's one announcement in particular that is really interesting and sort of relevant to a video I just recently posted. So let's take a quick look at what Microsoft have said that's coming for Power Apps. Build a production management app to manage their quality assurance process, which all team members can use to immediately confirm important information on screen while at their workstations. The need is for an app to review action items and topics before a meeting so that those discussions can proceed more smoothly. With Power Apps, makers can now use drag and drop to more easily. This is interesting. Just before he goes on, um, I can see kind of some visual changes here, which are just kind of interesting. These um, panels here seem to have, like I'm guessing they're containers, but I see that there's Sort of rounded corners and shadows so it looks like there are some visual changes and he does mention that there are some visual updates to power apps which is interesting but it looks like they've done this to the container control which is kind of neat where you know in in a lot of my videos that i've been doing recently um part of the the ui and the visual pres presentation that i've been doing i've been using html control in as one of the components in my my container or on on my canvas that way so i can get this kind of like car type of um visualization so this is interesting if they're just building this in now to containers really build responsive pages the introduction of the responsive layout containers unlock the ability for makers to create one app for multiple form factors now, we're making the responsive layout containers even easier than ever to use. Yeah, the new layout configuration allows makers to add and easily resize controls and adjust the yeah, spacing look, between them kind of right like, in the author and canvas. In addition to that, beautiful applications can now be built. Right, so um, looks like they made some improvements to responsive design and that's great because I, um, even though responsive containers or responsive sort of controls in Power Apps and responsive layouts have been there for a while, I um, don't really use them because I've kind of found like, yeah, they're not that great. And um, they, caught, they have been pretty fiddly to use. Well, I found them pretty fiddly to use in the past. So what I've tended to do, if a, um, if there has been a business requirement or there is a requirement for an app to work on a mobile device and a desktop, I tend to go down the route of just creating two applications that connect to the same data source. So when users need mobile access, they open the mobile app and when they need desktop access, they open the desktop app or the tablet app. Now, as you, you know, as you can imagine, this is not really an ideal situation because it'd be far better if we could just create one app that fits all screen sizes. So hopefully these changes that are coming to responsive design just make it easier and less clunky to create responsive apps. So that's, that's interesting news. By using new and refreshed controls, Power Apps now have an updated user interface aligning to the latest Microsoft Fluent Design System. Okay. This provides makers with beautiful controls and experiences to delight their end yeah, users. So there have been the new look and feel includes new themes interface. and updated styling, including fonts, colors, borders, shadows, and more. Okay, so let's take a look at what Microsoft is saying that's coming for Power Automate. 
causes of time loss and inefficiencies is the amount of phone calls needed to notify relevant parties whenever there's trouble, incidents, or issues they could not solve. So the first objective is to eliminate well, manual processes. But where to start? With Power Automate, organizations are able to easily get started building new automations just by describing them in natural language. <laughs> With this release, the feature supports additional actions, connectors, geo-availability, and parameter filing and explainability to make the experience even easier. Using state-of-the-art AI models like GPT-3, Power Automate can take nat- So you heard it there, guys. It's imminent that Microsoft are implementing a chat GPT or a GPT-3 language model into Power Automate. And I think out of all the sort of Power Platform products, it made the most sense to do this with Power Automate first. And um, as, you know, that quick demonstration that they gave there, like, um, you know, someone typing in some, some things that they need, you know, I need to, when a row is added to a particular table, please notify this person and then um, maybe write a record somewhere else. So this stuff, um, as we know, if you, it, well, if you haven't watched my previous video, we know that power, like chat GPT and this language model is pretty much aware of just about everything and, and is, is really capable. So anything that we've had sort of in the past for um, assisting with Power Automate and building Power Automate, like things like Figma and stuff like that, are just, are just gonna be, you know, nothing compared to what's coming with this. This, this is gonna go well beyond, you know, my prediction is this is gonna go well beyond what the, what anything else, any other tools to assist with building flow have gone before. Um, I expect this is just going to be really super powerful. Like a a GPT model that is specifically designed to build workflow for you. That is just this huge brain to build workflow. Um, yeah, I expect really huge things for this. Um, so yeah, very exciting, kind of scary, and. Um, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Will it take over as a Power Automate developers? Like, will we, will this just make it possible for absolutely anyone to build a Power Automate? My personal opinion is yes, most likely this will mean that anyone can build a Power uh, a Flow um, as long as they're aware of their business process and what they're trying to do and they're aware of the components. Now, will this predictive model, will it, will this uh, AI model, will this be able to uh, work out, like will this, will this AI model be able to work out sort of things that, you know, try to extrapolate the, the, the requirements from the user as they're having this conversation with it? Uh, again, my prediction is yes, it probably will. So even if someone is not really aware of the bits and pieces that need to come together for the workflow, um, this, uh, this, uh, you know, Power Automate will try its best to come up with something as close as what the user's after. So yeah, this is going to be really, really going to change everything, I think. So yeah, super, super interesting, interested to see how this implement, implementation goes. Uh, it, yeah, it should, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, very interesting. Natural language as input to create flows. You're now able to use everyday natural language to describe the cloud flow you want, and Power Automate can create it based on a simple written description of the scenario to automate. So now, having built the automation, next step is to build a solid approval process, which will handle specific issues which cannot be solved. Yeah. Creating so sequential approvals with I multiple think, levels or stages in Power Automate this is, is never- another real, This is another really interesting addition. So what this is allowing you to do in one action, you're able to create a multi-stage approval process. So as we know, like a lot of most business processes will lots of business processes require some kind of 
approval process and you know the way i typically achieve that is through a power apps interface where users will go in and um and the power app will will control the sort of steps in the workflow but what this will allow us to do is really simplify that a lot and just add this approvals process with this single action and um, control this sort of flow of what has to happen in particular stages of an approval just within one step in Power, in Power Automate, um, which will sort of eliminate the need to create sort of multiple screens, track statuses and that, that kind of stuff in your Power App. I mean, some of that you might still have to do depending on your, your business case, but this is definitely has the potential to simplify how we're doing approvals by just creating a workflow that just manages all that for us. Or been easier. With this new feature, you can define multiple levels or stages in an approval flow from within Microsoft Teams or from within Power Automate. Makers can define who needs to approve a flow at different levels or stages. The and approval request we'll goes to the next is. level or stage after all the approvers in a previous stage approve the flow. If someone rejects the flow at any stage, it's considered rejected and it's not passed on to other stages. Yeah, great. So you could have this approval process that has this multiple steps in there that's sequential or sort of top down. And then once all of those um, approvals, like here requested by this person, needs response, pending response, pending response. And I'm guessing you can sort of modify how this works. Like you might be able to make some of these um, run concurrently. You may also be able to have sort of multiple steps, um, stages of like multiple approvals across the same, that are happening across the same sort of uh, level, which is really interesting as well. So you could have one area approving, another area approval. And if one is negative, one comes back like rejected, the other is approved, then it does something. And if the other way around, then it does something else. So this, yeah, this will sort of condense and, and um and really simplify a lot of these approval workflows where you know you might have had to just branch off and have this really complex uh process with lots of conditional sort of form or conditional branching in there and now you can just summarize that in this one approval step which is really really great this is a this is a great addition to power automate all approvers can see the history of the approvals at each stage and they can see the final outcome too. To automate responses. Right, so this, now the video is just moving on to virtual agents, which we won't talk about. Okay, so that's some of the changes that are coming up for Power Apps and Power Automate. I am super excited about them, especially that approval process. Um, some of the visual changes are really going to be nice to have like extra fonts and stuff. I know you can kind of do that now, but having that all built in for most people, it's just better. Like let's just, just improve it Microsoft and rather than us sort of hacking at it, you improve it, we'll use it. And of course, you know, the really big one is that inclusion of chat GPT in Power Automate. That is, yeah, really, really cool. Really scary as well and um, just gonna change how we do Power Automate, I expect, or how everyone does Power Automate. Um, let me know in the comments what you think of this stuff, like especially what you think of this uh, AI stuff coming to Microsoft Power Platform. How do you feel about it? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty psyched. Right, okay guys, I'll um, see you in the next video. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, click the like button, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest content and comment something in the comment section below. I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.